Hey, welcome to episode 2 of Dark Souls 1. So, the first thing you might notice is that I am not playing the same character. Maybe it's the number of Estus Flasks I had, maybe it's the number of souls I had, whatever. If you go from the end of episode 1 to the beginning of episode 2, it's not the same guy. Um, so the reason for that, 1, 2... Uh, is because I recorded up to Ann Orlando. Uh, well, I played up to Ann Orlando, and I didn't have anything recorded. No, uh, not a thing. Um, I screwed up. I didn't exit a menu correctly when I hit the the hotkey to record. I only have the one monitor. I can't see I can't see my OBS and I just have to hope it's working properly. That is the life I live. Uh this the the run I had cuz I decided I was put that at crossroads. Do I just start playing from Anor Londo and say, "Hey, it sucks you missed it?" or do I reset entirely? And I was like, "Eh, the conversation I had while playing wasn't like the greatest thing in the world. Let's just um, keep it going. Well, let's just reset. You know, it, it it takes it takes me like what twenty minutes, twenty something minutes to get here. It's not a lot of time. Uh, I had a pretty a, a pretty flawless, I would say, run. I guess I don't know. I'm not gonna look at every individual decision I made, but I didn't um, I didn't die at all. Uh, getting back to the gargoyles, I beat the gargoyles pretty easily. Uh, there was no, nothing was different. Um, goodbye. So, I did die, however, getting to Anne Orlando. I'll own up to that. It wasn't any boss, it was a single dog, um... It was the dog that guards uh, the large ember. He got me, which sounds pretty shitty. Like, how do you how do you let yourself get killed that way? Which is why I'm gonna own up to it. You know, it was shitty that that happened. I don't have an I don't have an excuse. I just got lazy and complicit, and I died. I I beat the. Uh, so I, I beat the Capra Demon pretty flawlessly. I did invade. I did, um, I did, uh, get help on that. But that was more for, like, novelty than anything else. I have never, never invited someone to that, to that fight. And it, it was right next to the door, and I was like, sure, why not? This should be fun. Um... I don't know if I see that. I'll do it again. It depends entirely on how I'm feeling when I get there. But I think we're shooting for Anor Londo again. Uh, and then, yeah, no idea what's going to happen after that. My my pre Anor Londo play is pretty... I would say it's pretty good. I know what I'm doing. I know how to fight the bosses I want to fight. Once I get to Anor Londo, it becomes a bit trickier. Um, it's Ornstein and Smo. Uh, I'm probably gonna die, and so like, I might just. I am probably just gonna beat Ornstein and Smo. Look at the timer, and if it's been like over like forty minutes, I'll cut it right there and say that's it. If it's been like twenty to thirty. I might run and do Great Wolf Sif. He's a pretty quick pickup. Uh, so, what's been going on with me? I have employment in the works. There's a lot of... There's some processing that needs to be done. Some It's working for a casino, so there's a lot of regulations surrounding it. So that's going to be a couple weeks. Um, I made these chicken black bean quesadillas yesterday that were crazy good. My cooking's been improving. Still not, like, 100% good, but 
it's it's definitely been an improvement that I'm liking. Uh, and they announced they announced new X-wing stuff today and yesterday, so I'm pretty pogged up about that. Uh, I know I I talk about Star Wars a lot. But it's just such a good thing I want to talk about. Don't... You know, that's exactly how I died to the dog uh, last time. Um, but I didn't repeat it. Okay. I want this dog to come get me. Okay, we're good. And then I'm going to go over here. Oh, nope. Got you. Go up here. Got you. And this guy comes out, and I'm not going to hit the door this time. Uh, but yeah, so for... I talk about Star Wars a lot. I love X-Wing. It's my favorite board game out there. Anytime they announce new ships, I'm just like, I'm all for it. They announced, for my faction, they announced the Edda 2 Interceptor. Oh, shit. I'm a runaway, actually. That's the problem with playing this game without any clothes on, is, uh, you have negative bleed resistance. Uh, what? So, a slight tickle causes you to bleed. I could probably put those on, but I don't think I'm going to. Gotta keep with my image. This has been a really terrible lower um, berg. I'm probably not gonna go back to the shrine with a bonfire. Um, it's Capra Demon is kind of an all or nothing boss fight. It's not really an endurance boss fight. I don't think I need uh, five. I definitely don't need five, um, I don't need all 10 S's flasks. Yeah. So they announced the Edda 2 Interceptor, which is the, uh, it's the Jedi, it's the starship that Anakin and Obi-Wan pilot at the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. Uh, and they announced, uh, the V-Wing, which is, like, in the extended universe. It's not really in, I think it might show up in, like, a couple frames of the third movie. Uh, so I'm excited for both the ships. I think they're going to be excellent. I look, at, I look at it, and I'm like, I want two of each. So that's $80 plus tax, and then I might need a third of each. But I, I think I've been doing a lot better on my game spending, so... I don't feel that bad. Ugh. So I didn't see any... Um... Oh, what was it? I did not see any places for me to summon a guy so I'm gonna shut up now probably or die immediately oh god I fucked that up double slurp okay you should be good get that corpse out of here Reset. Have him jump at me. Come on. Okay. Victory achieved. Key to deaths. Um. Poggers? Ooh. 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 Okay. Um, I think I have, I think there's a law, actually, Congress passed last year, where you have to use it. Um, so, that's, that's gonna be pretty pog. Uh, I don't know how much strength is required to use it. Okay, I can't use it at all. So, oh, man. 
Well, this this run just got interesting because I'm now going to um, have to use it, which means I'm going to die a lot more, which means that there's going to be more videos. Ow. Jerk. Uh, the problem is I run... Really, the issue is I run really lean when it comes to souls. I don't fight unnecessary enemies. Um, and not only will I need higher strength, um, I'm going to need a... I need higher stamina so I can actually do fast roll with it. Cause if you think I'm gonna medium roll, better um, change your fucking outlook. It's just you ever think about how difficult it is to kill. Like, why why do enemies with torches? Why are they the most dangerous motherfuckers in this game? Uh. Yeah, so we're gonna kill you. Oh, shit! Okay, we're good. Uh, do we have a bone? I don't know if the Capra Demon drops a bone. Let's go see. It did. We're good. We're done. Great. Okay. Go to here, level up our stunt strength, pump those numbers up. Uh, can we wield it now? We can. But we are medium rolling. How's the damage? Way more. Um, I'm going to take a spit pit stop over by the... This guy over by the blacksmith. See if I can get it upgraded. Ah, uh, you know what? That's too much out of the way. You know, I don't really have that many soul-consuming items. If this, I don't remember the stat. I'm pretty sure the machete, despite the fact that it has like a unique title, is still just a regular um, titanite weapon. And so that means that, but it might be a bit more. It might be a bit more expensive to upgrade. I don't even know. So why not instead I uh, take my plus five Zwei Hander, and I beat Quaylag, and then I take those souls. Not those souls. I don't know if I I don't know if I can risk that. I'm probably gonna spend them. Okay. Iwando Hello, Valley of the Drakes. Goodbye, Valley of the Drakes. I someone asked me um last week uh if if I had a crystal ball that could see into the future, what would I ask it? And I'm gonna be real honest with you. I, I don't want to look into the future right now. You know, it's, things are a little bit rough. I kind of want to... I kind of want to live in, in this unknowing state. So I simply said, I want to know if the new Star Wars game is going to be any good. It's just... It's, we're living very uncertain times. Knowing that in November, I'm at least going to be able to play a Star Wars game I like. October, a Star Wars game I like. It makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Okay. We are gonna summon Mildred. Oh my god. Nope. We're gonna summon Mildred for the Quaylag fight just because it's not 
the most fun fight in the world, and I just want to kind of, you know, get through this. Okay. Last, um... You can't use humanity when people are present. Okay. Last uh, time I went through here, it took me, like, two minutes to summon Mildred. It was, I don't know, was it just, like, bugged or something? Okay. Okay. She's dead. Give me your items. Okay. We're gonna... Um, I don't... No, we're not gonna do anything here, actually. We are gonna pop a little thing for that. Chill, that's this flasks. Feeling pretty good. Feeling all right. Future's so bright. You know, I gotta wear shades. Butchered that song, I know. Um, give me that large Titanite shard. I think... Uh, so in my last... Um, in my last run, I believe I... Um, I think the Titanite lizard or whatever, gem lizard... I think he dropped a chunk. I think this time I got two large shards out of it. Um, let me check. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Be wary of attacking. Imminent sorrow. Let's see. I saw I saw Scott Pilgrim versus the world two days ago. Uh if I'm gonna talk about that I hadn't seen it. Uh Edgar Wright's one of my favorite directors. I like video games, clearly. I like action movies. I think... And this is going to sound really weird. I think I didn't know the movie was going to have so much action in it. And people were like, well... Which sounds... I don't know. Does that sound dumb? It, it's one of those movies that, like, you're not quite sure how it was... I'm not, I don't remember how it was advertised to me. So, like, did I not think it was going to be, like, this action-packed journey? Maybe I thought it was going to be more meme than it was. Oh, I'm dead. Goodbye. Yep. Shouldn't have swung twice. That's my problem with Quaylag. She's just really easy to dodge, and then she gets one attack that's just like, I actually am going to kill you now. We're going to reverse the hollowing. But, yeah... I, I really liked it. Um, it. It makes me interested in reading the comics. Uh, if I have complaints, they're... I think they're relatively minor. Um, maybe, like, how to do with how characters are written. But if watching Edgar write movies taught me anything, is that man does not know how to write a female character at all. Like, he just He just can't do it. And so the fact that the female characters are as good as they are for being so underdeveloped speaks more to the quality of the source material than it does to his ability to write. However, because really, we're all here to see fancy cuts and editing. That's what, we, that's what we're all here for, really. And uh, the movie delivers. Uh, it's funny. It's quick. It's kind of a blink-and-you-miss-it type gag. Very much an Edgar Wright film. Also, the movie made me think that Michael Sarah knew how to fight. 
which is like that's bold and if if edgar wright can do that can make michael sarah look intimidating um You need to get your shit together, Hollywood. I shouldn't have to deal with this shit anymore. Terrible fight scenes. Let's not die this time. Anyone else appreciate the fact that before the spider vomits lava, she kind of like taps its head like, it's alright buddy, you can let it out. I appreciate that fact. Maneater Mildred is dumb as bricks, but she also takes like no damage. Should be good. See, that's the fight's supposed to go down. She never uses her AoE attack, and we win. Um, twin humanities. Full lever. Okay, one section to go. I, did I get... I did. I don't know why I didn't see this whole quail like pop up. Okay. Bone. Level up. Um. That should be good. I'll keep those souls. I don't know what I'm doing after Dark Souls 1. I don't really want to do Dark Souls 2 or 3. I guess I could do 2. Um, I'd have to buy it. And I'm really not quite sure I want to do that just yet. I have it on PS4, not PC. And not about, I'm not about to like learn how to do that shit. It's not difficult, but let's not let's not do more effort than I have to. Um, I like the idea of playing this like longer form game. I, I like roguelikes, but they take a little too much. They take a little too much concentration out of me right now to talk and to play at the same time. I can sort of turn my brain off. Plus, there's lots of moments of downtime in Dark Souls. This is. You know, like, right now, what we're doing is downtime. I haven't watched my friend Novus's videos yet, but I will... I'll probably try to watch... Get the fuck out of my way. God damn. Try to watch his Carrion video tonight. I think he also did another one. Um... interesting I think a not often talked about uh, element of like our history I say element over history terrible word choice I think what should be ribbed on more and I think would be more what's, what's always funny is quack doctors of like the 1920s because uh, before that you have these guys, and basically, you know, we Americans would refer to them as snake oil salesmen. And there's the image of this man walking, you know, he's, he's on a wagon. He's going for the west from Dusty Town. And he might fleece 30 people. He might make it just enough money to get by. And yeah, he's doing bad work, but like, he's not really harming that many people. And then the 1910s, the 1920s, uh, radio is is increasing, and um, 
I don't need to rest here, but what if I died? What then? Uh, radio's increasing. Print journalism is uh, all over the place. Germ theory has been developed, so that there's there's that. But like as a whole, the medical field is still they're still not quite there yet in terms of actually keeping coherent rules. So you have these individuals who can say whatever they can say whatever the hell they want. They can say whatever claims. Uh, they use radio. They take out newspaper ads, and it works. Suddenly, you instead of seeing thirty people in Montana, you are living in Chicago, and you are selling sugar water to people from L.A. to New York City. And one of the most interesting figures. And I was like, before I hit play, I was like, if I'm going to talk about him, I'm going to look up his name. I forgot to look up his name. Um, so we're going to call him the goat gland guy. He had the genius idea of taking his... Oh, let's go. Let's pop that soul. He had the genius idea of saying to... Oh, uh, coming up... Removing the testicles of a goat and implanting them in the scrotum of a man. No. I want... Tight night charts. One, two, 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 three. Okay. And we buy. Well, then we large soul of a proud knight. We modify. We get this up to plus six, baby. We reinforce. And then we buy... Uh, oh, man. You're really going to make me do this? Fine, I'll do it. It's like, what, 500 souls? 400. So he takes these, and every, the thing with, with these, a lot of these quack doctors that is so interesting to me is that they start with, they, they very selectively target their area of expertise. Um, for instance, Goat Gland Guy, he claims um, it will get your junk working when it's not working right, or if you can't seem to produce a kid, it will uh, remove infertility with goat hormones. And he actually, it actually starts, he starts getting pretty popular. People start getting this treatment. Uh, the beginning, and not even beginning, I think the history of medical science, um, ha if there was a history of medical science, half the book would be, how do we make our dicks better? That's just a fact. So he, boy. Okay, so now I'm going to beat Set's Fortress, medium rolling. Not something I don't think I've ever done. Uh, so this is going to be interesting. And this is a weapon is slower than I'm used to. Okay, what's its attacks? That and two hand. Editor's note, we never strong attack. That's, there's no way that's going to be good. <laughs> oh no oh no I think it's pretty popular and then he starts expanding suddenly the hormones of a goat can cure oh that's what I forgot to do the hormones of a goat can cure cancer can cure lung disease heart disease skin problems uh, eye problems he just just makes up whatever he wants. Now, obviously, there's no evidence for any of this stuff, and if there was, it wouldn't, like... And I don't think at any point he ever thought this procedure would actually work. And if you don't know any of your medical science, you can't just... You can't just put something 
in the human body and have it work. It's not like, you know, you're putting a couple drops of hot sauce into a chili, well, of like ep extract into a chili to make it hotter. The human body is not going to absorb anything from this from this matter. It's just going to reject it. At best, you have a harmless bit of foreign flesh sitting in your scrotum. At worst, the surgery was done without any sanitation, and you have an infection, and you got to lose the scrotum. And there's a lot of wiggle room between those two options. A lot of bad things can happen. Anyway. This man starts a radio station. And he's at the, at some, he becomes America's first Dr. Oz. This weird, very charismatic man who is shilling the worst medical science around. And he's incredibly popular and people listen to him. And it's, his radio station is, is so unique in, I'm gonna jump. Oh, didn't jump. Ah, but you see. Okay. That didn't break your shit, that was bullshit. That's good deeps. Good damage. I made the game a lot harder on myself, I know, but that's what we're all here to see, right? So, he, um, this radio station has live music, uh, talk shows. It has everything. It's sort of the most popular entertainment around for, for who knows how, how far the range he got. Okay, that's nice, actually. I, I like that. Um, well, because this isn't the worst thing in the world, because this is the 1800s, eventually he is found out. Um... There is a, in this time period, there's a wide variety of actual doctors who sort of have taken it, have sort of decided it's their goal in life to um, stop this. Uh, I, you know, and you can kind of see why. If the, the oath is first, do no harm. The second part is, hey, make sure other people aren't doing harm in the name of medical science, because it kind of makes you look bad. I think that should be good. Oh, shit. I fucked up. I'm gonna wait for him, actually. How come they don't trigger the traps? Um, so there's one doctor who who goes after him. He writes towards the uh, writes toward the medical of I think Kansas is where he lived. He writes towards the, uh, the the doctor's board of Kansas. He writes to the governor. He writes to newspapers, uh, and eventually they do get around and say, actually, yeah, what you're doing is wrong. So they ban his practice. Like, shut him down. So he decides that if the medical board doesn't like him, and the medical board is approved by the governor, then he's going to run for governor. And he's going to decide he's in the medical board. And the sh shocking part about that is he almost wins. He's an incredibly popular figure. I forgot it was three shots. I don't think I would have died. It wouldn't have been good for my well-being. Arrows have a way of being unhealthy for you. Oh, fuck. Oh. 
What the fuck is this guy is so aggressive? Whoa! Whoa! Oh no! Don't do that. Getting caught on everything. I'm gonna slurp up. Yeah, he almost, he runs for governor twice. The first time he comes really close. The second time, uh, he's not as close. But that has to do with time. By the second time rolls around, he hasn't been a practicing doctor for like two or three years, depending on the term limit. But, you know, that first time, he would have won if it not for like a rule change last minute of like, you have to, you have to write in his name a certain way. That should be enough Estus. Nah. Nah. I have a lot of humanity to spare. Let's play it safe. Oh, this guy, but the guy got a lot of money. He goes to Mexico, builds himself a big mansion, builds himself a radio station. Uh, in Mexico, uh, still, I believe he does more procedures in Mexico. Wouldn't surprise me. And he, um, and it's, there's this, the, the doctor who's been basically calling him a fraud for decades. He decided he had enough of that guy and he's going to sue him. Uh, I believe in this country, suing someone for libel is, it's difficult. You have to prove, um, you have to prove that they lied, that they were, that, that they knowingly told untruths. You had to prove that it harmed you and you had to and I believe there's one more thing I think you have to prove that they benefited from it but I could be misremembering very hard cases to win and for the most part I agree with that that's a discussion for another day uh, so Sort of bop him with that. Tight night shard. Nice. Um He loses the court case and he loses it so hard that he is actually um, found he the court finds him essentially guilty uh, of being a fraud they decide they they the court judge decides that it wasn't liable because the doctor at no point lied that you were performing medical science you knew didn't work on people and taking their money and giving them and promising things that you that you knew you couldn't actually deliver on so last last the un, the session i didn't record i actually knocked him off the edge obviously not going to happen this time but this damage is hella good So it looks like we're going to come up to the end of the episode pretty soon. So I should probably finish talking about the guy. Because this immediately opens up the, uh, the courts to talk about... Like, suddenly everyone he ever did a procedure on is capable of suing him. He was found... Uh, they, they could sue him for fraud. They can sue him for damages. They could sue him for whatever. The fact is, the fact is, he didn't cure any of their ailments, and he put goat testicles in their scrotum. He dies penniless. He also was a Nazi, so don't feel bad. He had swastikas in his swimming pool. 
which kind of sounds like a album for a, like a white nationalist rapper. And then we pump that endurance up. And we'll be back to see how our demon machete does with uh, Ornstein and Smell in the next session. <laughs>